I'm, I'm Anthony Small, the executive director of Music Preserves Foundation, and this is our co-founder and our president, Patty Compton. We share the rich multicultural history of American music in schools and in the community. Tonight we have a very special night with Mojave Ghost opening up for the great Mark Ford. And we're gonna have a short conversation with uh, Mark as well. Um, and and uh, did you have any comments uh, initially? Ready to get it going? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mark Ford and Phil Jones. <laughs> We are, we're so happy to, to have, uh, have, have Mark and, and his band here. And before, um, before we get into it, I wanna make sure and thank our hosts and partners in this event, the Ocean Institute, as well as our gold record sponsors, the City of Dana Point and Ohana Festival. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to the historian in the family. Uh, Patty, and to go ahead and, uh, and, and kick things off, and we'll just have a short uh, 10 to 15 minute conversation uh, with the guys. Here you go, Pat. Hi, yes, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for attending tonight, and, um, and we're thrilled to have um, Mark Ford in, in here in, in house. And uh, normally we talk a little bit about history, and um, you know, that's what we do at Music Preserves Foundation. We bring his music history into the schools. I don't know if a lot of history is necessary tonight. I mean, this is, you know, it's blues, rock. I think everyone knows maybe that the, you know, the blues rose up out of the Mississippi Delta. It was, you know, music born of pain. And um, it's like, it's like medicine, you know. And then in the 60s and 70s, you know, all the rock bands were heavily influenced by the blues. And uh, so we'll just kind of get it started here. What was, what are you, you know, most influenced by? Well, the blues is definitely the roots of all of it. I think every form of American music yes. has got the blues in it. And I think that it, everything traces back to there. And from there, it's just neighborhoods and how far away you got from the source. Yeah, we call them branches, yeah. Um, but that's exactly right. That's basically what we teach in schools. We teach that the blues are the roots um, of American music. And then we... And then we <laughs> We get to rock and roll, it's kind of like the truck, and then we uh, branch out into all the branches because everything really is based on the roots, and the roots are very deep. Um, so another question I was I was thinking about was, you know, your songwriting is so um, you know emotional, and what inspires you? How how has that changed as you as you as we you know gotten older and moved through time? As you as your songwriting changed with you know, the passing of time? I hope so. Uh, I hope it gets better. Uh, it gets harder to um, find the time or make the time. Or it's not always a, a fun place, the place you got to write from. And so to go there and um, and visit there for a sustained period of time to try to really put to words what you're maybe not even understanding gets to be. Uh, Harder and harder for me. I've talked to other songwriters. It's, it's similar too. I mean, you know, I was, you know, maybe not as, as crazy and stupid and obsessive as I was when I was younger. Which you found lots of time when you're in that headspace, you know, to do what you wanted to do, and that was what, you know, it was a. But it was that or or jail, I think. Really. <laughs> Songwriting with Jim. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely a way to work it out. Even if you didn't know exactly what you were talking about, something would get worked out. I have one more question, then I'm going to hand it back to Anthony. But, um, you know, you're from, speaking of the blues, you know, you're from California, right, from Long Beach. And, um, you know, I think I find it interesting the, the mix of the being from this West Coast area and then blending that with the rootsy blues from the deep south and it creates this interesting you know mint blend uh, how does how do you work that out 
Well, like you said, the branches, right? You know, we're talking about a music that is almost 100 years old, and, uh, or more, probably. I mean, it's longer than that, but I mean that we've heard recorded music. So, but you have all of the branches to listen to now. All of the things that came off those roots, not just the roots themselves. So there's so much more to listen to and be influenced by. And plus we have access to anything in the world now. You know, back in those days it literally was whoever was the guy that you saw in person right. and got to sit with. Record you have. Right. right. Yeah, so I mean it's you know, it's just being open to to things and I recognize threads in all the music that I listen to, all the generations, all the genres. You know, there's, there's that, there's that thread in there. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great uh, description and great explanation. Um, for, for some of you that might not be familiar um, with Mark Ford and 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 his history, um, you know, Mark uh, was a part of the uh, the band Black Crows and played on. Uh, was it three uh, three albums with Denmark? Yeah. Three, yeah, three that were released right. uh, in the '90s, and then a couple more that got released later on. Right. Um, you know, and it's kind of in in working with the Robinson Brothers. I know that um, you know you, you recorded with them, you toured those those albums, you went through the storms with them. Uh, and then reunited, you know, uh, in various um, incarnations of the of the band. Um, could you just give us some insight to what uh, those years were like as part of the Black Crows? Well, um, it was it was crazy. It was uh, like stepping onto a rocket ship because when I stepped in, their first record had just sold five million records, and so they were going that way and so I joined in the second record and the record debuted at number one rock record I think for a few weeks and uh, yeah it was a lot and it was it was you know it was all all consuming for several years you know when you weren't touring you were recording for the next tour and uh, it, it, yeah and when no one tells you no it's it's a dangerous. Yeah. yeah, you're young and no one tells you no, and, yeah. and it's, uh, it's a lot. A lot of yes men and yes women around, I would imagine. Yeah, well, you're kind of you know expected to be the bad guy when you're a rock and roll band, you know. And so, you know, we did. I was gonna say it seems like you like like you might have um, at you know at that at that time. Um, the man to uh, Santa <laughs> Probably younger than me. <laughs> so the man to your left, uh, Bill, Bill Jones, uh, um, you know, again, some of you might be very familiar with, with, with his work and a resume a mile long. Some of the, um, one of the neatest, uh, the neatest, um, you know, bands and, and groups uh, that you worked with was, was Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. And um, you heard of them? <laughs> So, just as I'd asked about, you know, about um, about Black Crows, could you give us just a little insight of what it was like? Um, you played, you were the the drummer on, on Full Moon Fever, uh, for sure, right? Could yes. You, yeah. So, could, could you give us a little insight of what it was like uh, recording and, and touring with uh, with with uh, the great Tom Petty and and and, and Heartbreakers? Oh, well. Um, it was the best band that I could have ever been in, ever. I mean, and that's what I felt. <laughs> that's what I felt like when I was playing with them on stage. And I was a percussionist. I was not a member of the band, so to speak. But then, uh, yeah. And then uh, when, I, when it was time, I was playing with Mike Campbell off and on for you know, a few months just jamming, basically. And, and Tom and Jeff wrote the song and they wanted to record it. So they brought it over to Mike's house where we were getting together. 
and we, we recorded the song in a day, and it was free falling. And then, uh, and then we just kept recording them. And again, I wasn't in the band, but I was like, you know, making these records, and they were obviously great. And, and so I would like um, get the get the uh, rush from that day or whatever you call it, you know, the rough mix. And I lived about an hour away, so I'd drive home and I'd listen to this rough mix, and I'd just be going, man, <laughs> this is going to be good. Yeah, but the record company didn't hear a single, you know, so that's the story there. Right, right. Um, well, I promised that I would keep we, that, that we'd keep this short so we could get to Mojave Ghost, but I do have a, uh, just a couple more questions. Um, you two have worked together on um, on a uh, Neil Young tribute called Neil Songs that's a somewhat recent release. And um, could you tell me a little bit about what, what that was like recording and also if we're gonna hear any Neil Young songs tonight? Uh, yes. <laughs> a couple of songs, we play them yeah, towards the end of the set. We just, I said, uh, Mark and I were just talking on the phone as well. We weren't really doing anything right then. And he said, uh, well, why don't we just record some Neil? Neil songs. So I have a studio at home, so he came over and Jim came over and we we just played them as, you know, really pretty quickly, a uh, couple days, yeah. you know, and then, uh, and we had a lot of fun doing it. I mean, it was just, and, uh, and then we mixed them and put them out. Right, and um, those songs can be um, found on, on Bandcamp. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's Bandcamp Friday too, by the way, so you can get uh, you can get that album at I think half price or something along those lines. But um, well, um, I'm looking forward to you know hear, hearing you all tonight, hearing the um, the Neil Young um, songs, of course, as well. We're so proud to have to have you guys here and uh, and to be able to share your music, to share world class music and influences with uh, the community of Dana Point. And I want to thank you guys very, very much. Thank you. Let's, let's hear it. It'll be just a couple minutes and Mojave Ghost will be on the stage rocking again. Thank you.